going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Ask Nick Edition. We have a great episode for you today. Very excited about our episode because it's awesome. Also, I just feel like maybe, you know, we've uh, had some new audience members. It's nice to have you guys. Uh, we really appreciate you, the fact that you like the show. We, the show's growing. We've... Uh, we're we're doing exciting things. I really I'm, I'm I'm so happy you guys seem to be enjoying the show. I really I don't probably say that enough, but you've really become my whole life. Nick loves you guys. I he do. does. He really cares. I have a hard, I have a hard time <laughs> showing. No, it's uh I'm, I'm really I'm excited that you guys are excited. So thanks, I guess. Um <laughs> <laughs> So passive aggressive. I'm excited. You're excited. So thanks, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I, I, I'm awkward and weird. That's how you know there's real heart and but, feeling but, there. Uh, I thanks for thanks for listening. Happy you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. <laughs> uh, we have a great week for you. Uh, we will be discussing more of the ultimatum this week. Obviously, Colby and Madeline will be with us on Wednesday for our going deeper episode. That I can tell you now and uh lots to talk about with them <laughs> also we're trying to get another cast member for uh to tomorrow's episode either way we'll definitely be breaking it all down on tuesday either with one of the castmates or someone who's willing to talk shit uh one of the two uh so be sure to tune in for the rest of the week uh for uh our episodes which uh i think you'll enjoy uh we have uh, an update well, first of all, do you ladies have any updates on your lives? Do you want to share? Or? No, I think I just like, I don't think I've ever um, dated someone who's been as extroverted as me or who like acts on ent- extroversion as much. And Bar it was, guy? yeah, he's super friendly, like super good energy, super present, like really easy to just like instantly kind of like connect with. And it was funny because we went to, I brought him to like a party that my friend hosted, which was so fun. It was like the, one of the best house parties I've been to. Cause like, you know how we were saying on the Chloe Cherry episode, sometimes you get in those social situations where it's kind of like standoffish and it's like, Oh, are people going to be weird? It was, everybody was so warm. But even though we went to this party together, like we maybe like, like we played a game of beer pong together, but we were like, almost separate the entire night because we just kept like meeting people and each kind of being super socially sufficient and it was just like fascinating to me i was like wow i don't think i've ever this is the first person you've dated that it seems to me that don't take this the wrong way (laughs) (laughs) great start what a weird laugh (laughs) Um, (laughs) maniacal but, but you seem in less control and actually in a good way and I think that's good for you. Yeah. I feel like genuinely scared. <laughs> like I think yeah. before I would I think feel, you like him a lot. I don't even, I, I do like him so far. Like I do like him a lot yeah. so far. I, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, but no, <laughs> like, no, I don't. Can you listen? No, I'm just listen. like, I'm even like, yeah, I like him somewhat. Me, <laughs> cut to me. I had a terrible nightmare Sunday night. And in the middle of the night, I was like, I had a bad dream. <laughs> and he was like still asleep, like puts his arm around me. Whatever. I just, I just meant that like I, when I say scared, it's because I'm realizing like how much fear of intimacy I have. <laughs> well, and that's what I mean. Like you, you're not in control is like, there's a level of vulnerability you seem to be willing to totally. have. Totally. Or like, I, th- I don't know that I've actually followed through on having it, but I think I'm realizing that it needs to exist. I've started it. Like with new girl, I think you liked the idea of being vulnerable. Well, with new girl, I don't think it, well, I I, 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 I I don't mean talking about feelings. I mean, like, yeah, I, I think, don't think I it think... necessitated it that much because I felt so instantly like comfortable with her. And I feel like we accessed a kind of like closeness or intimacy that felt just like very natural and didn't require the same kind of vulnerability for some reason, like this situation. I don't know if it's just yeah, the I'm pace sure at you, which it's moving. Yeah, I'm sure you new girl like talked about stuff and opened up. I mean, like you're you're around him there's a sense of vulnerability that yeah. you feel and that is i think for it's you. so scary <laughs> i hate it i'm so scared uh, <laughs> just nick just always assumes i have nothing no no that's not fair <laughs> no 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 he goes like this uh, just no, <laughs> he was living to you you well i i did i know i did that then but you're the one who's always like nope yeah, Stores I feel like Ali, I, I feel like like when the punctuation of like my like 
relationship story or dating story, Sally would be like, and I had seven margaritas. <laughs> Maybe I, I did. did. I reorganized like, my Jesus. closet. Maybe I did. I I love a good margarita. No, I love it. I feel um, like you're very, you own it, though. I, yeah, fuck yeah. I feel like you embrace it. You're proud to say it, and it's relatable. Sorry I like tequila. Um, <laughs> it's the only thing that cuddles me after a bad dream. I went to some birthday parties over the weekend. Interesting enough, met a person for the first time, and they were like, you have a great voice. You should do, like, a podcast or a radio host or something. Mm, that was you, interesting. What did you say? It was in the middle of an entire group and everyone heard it. And then the birthday boy was like, she is on a podcast. I, like I work on one of the bigger podcasts yeah. in the country. Um, <laughs> the birthday boy has always said that I needed to meet his best man. Cause he thought we would hit it off. And his, his best man was like the most perfect person ever. Um, he said that, or you confirmed it. Well, the birthday boy was like, I think you would hit it off with my best man. Met the best man. I he's, was like, this is a perfect Allie's specimen of a man. He's perfect. Allie's saying he's perfect. Yeah. And? He lives in Denver. Oh, God. And I told that to my mom, and she was like, you should just start collecting long distance boyfriends so you have one in every city. Yeah, it's like, you know well, that? Okay, so he, he lives in Denver, but like, so what? Did you hit it off? Did you exchange numbers? Or were you like, you live in Denver? Bye. Honestly, <laughs> like, we chit chatted. I will say, Kiki snuggled with him majority of the party. And as she opposed doesn't to like me. men. Shh, Kiki don't like men. Okay. He brought his dog. His dog's name is Kira. It, you know, everything felt like it was working. Um, he no, he accidentally, I think, no liked. No sense to you or any of our uh, Nick callers, but my dog likes him is not anything. I know it doesn't mean anything. I just oh. thought it was cute. Okay. I just thought it was cute. And, you know, he likes my dog, so I don't know. Like, what does it all mean? <laughs> oh my god, I wasn't asking. It's a sign. It's a sign. Um, I think he accidentally liked one of my Instagram photos at two thirty in the morning. So then I just like sent him a follow request. Oh, you're in. She's oh like, hell um, yeah! And was we it, might was it, we might hang out on Easter. The, he, what do you mean accidentally? <laughs> was it deep like, in the are grid? You, you're dumbing it down. He liked one of your. He Instagram liked one of my posts. Instagram photos at like two thirty in the morning. Which one was like? Was it a recent one or was when it? I was on twenty twenty? <laughs> That's so it was a while back. Oh, I don't post on Instagram, so it was like well, how, so, like my third back? last one. Wait, third, like third well, most recent. He, did, he yeah. still was looking. Yeah. He, he was still, looking. He still was looking. Yeah. And you and once you like a photo once, you don't make that mistake twice in the same session. So he, you know, he kept going, and he was yeah. probably more like cautious of like double tapping. Who it's knows? And then um, who knows? I don't know. I asked the birthday boy if he wanted to hang out on Easter, and he said, sure. So I was like, well, maybe the best man can come, and the three of us will hang out. So you didn't, uh, did, there was no... There was no exchange of anything. Was there certainly, like, flirtatious vibes? I don't know. We did sing a karaoke duet together. Yes. <laughs> um, and the yeah, birthday boy's pretty, wife who, said who, but that... Who, how'd that happen? Walk me through... Birthday boy was like, you both you, have the best voices. You have okay. to sing this together. Less, what song did you do? It, okay, Shallow. <laughs> Start <laughs> You're like, I'm in the deep. <laughs> did, it feel vi- did it feel flirty and vibey when you were doing it? Or did I mean, it we feel were like, like literally... made you do it together? <laughs> you know, like, you guys do this. I, I mean... We weren't even like staring at each other when we did it. We just high fived at the end. I'm picturing the Ella Enchanted uh, scene. Oh where my god! It's like somebody to love, where it's like really, <laughs> it's a real catalyst for closeness. Yeah. So we'll see. We have an update. Does everyone remember the caller whose birthday it was, and they were going on a trip? And it kept getting more and more expensive. And she said, I'm so sorry. Please keep the money for the wine tasting, but I will need the rest of my money sister, back because we can no right? longer go. Her sister yes. was the rich, yes. sh- like the snob. Second home. And the Second sister home, was yeah. like, it's just money. You can make more. Yeah. Why don't you care about my birthday? And then her sister was like trying to be like, hey, we can do this, but we can't do that. And her mm-hmm. sister was not happy. Yeah, okay, I remember now. And then she what was like shit, was shit talking with her other sister. 393. You want to go back and listen to episode 393. And you called her like a birthday Zilla. I feel like it was the hymns at church, you know, turn to page him. <laughs> number 700, the summons, number Please 700. <laughs> oh, you may be seated. <laughs> on eagle's wings. Let's freaking go. Okay. Update. Hi, so I have an update. Quite a few things happened after our call that involved my sister being an asshole. I never spoke to her like Nick suggested before the party. I just went to the birthday party, had fun, and left. It was mostly drama-free. Then I found out my sister was lying to her friends about what happened and making me look like an asshole. Then she made a comment in a group text about my finances and student loans and how I should have prepared better and... and totally unprovoked i said nothing to initiate that after that i finally reached the point where i felt like i was starting to really resent her and had to say something to her after not speaking to her for a month after her birthday party she called me to see how i was doing and i told her i wanted to talk to her about something i called her out 
out and said, it's not okay for her to treat me like this. It was going pretty horribly and she was denying everything and turning things around. She finally said, I never said that and called her friend who she told lied to about me to confirm her story. <laughs> I don't know. Keep going. Unfortunately for her, her friend was on my side and told my sister she was in the wrong. She also kind of mediated our fight until we got to a good place. And my sister apologized and I empathized with her feelings and I thought we were okay. And then something happened last night. I should mention I got mad and told her she needed to listen to this podcast during our confrontation on the phone. So what happened was her friend who mediated called me last night said my sister brought up the podcast to her last night and was saying it was one sided. Her friend was disagreeing with her. So my sister called my mom in the room and was like, mom, if blank had to choose between doing something important for herself or someone else, what would she choose? I guess my mom said something for herself and my sister was vindicated and said see even her own mom thinks she's selfish there was a lot of stuff her friend told me that my sister said but the part about my mom calling me selfish was the only part that really hurt my feelings i'm upset but i feel like my sister has been so crazy and attempting to pick fights with me and i don't want to give in and give her what she wants i also don't want to tell her that her friend told me what she said about me and throw her friend under the bus who is sticking up for me i'm feeling a little deflated but i'm just going to keep sticking to my boundaries and have more of a superficial relationship with my sister who i feel like i can't trust thinks the worst of me and wants everyone around her to think the worst of me too Wait, so she hasn't confronted her sister yet. She did over the phone, and then they called the friend, and the friend mediated and actually took the caller side, not the sister side, even though the sister brought her into the ring thinking that she would defend the sister. Get mediated here. Let's settle this on mediation. But now the mom's getting involved. Let's settle this on mediation. Please, if you're listening, we would love. And bring your mom, maybe. Well, no, see, no disrespect to mothers out there. This is a weird way to start a sentence. (laughs) Moms, like the... They're, they're the mom of two kids. It's tough. Like, you know, they, they, it's hard for them to try to take sides because moms are so good at being empathetic and like seeing everyone's side that like when someone is in the wrong, like it's just harder. I think it's getting mom to mediate can be very complicated. But mom wasn't mediating. Mom was asked a question. Do you think my younger sister would do something for herself or something for someone else? And the mom said for herself. I'm not following. So like, it would be like your brother going to your mom and saying, Hey mom, hypothetical question. Do you think if presented with two options, Nick would choose something and like help himself or help someone else first? And your mom would say, Oh yeah, Nick would help himself. Okay. But that's a stupid, no offense. That was a silly question. It's a loaded question for your mom to like, without con, like, and and then it would be like your brother going around saying, see, even our mom thinks Nick is selfish. It was so like, yeah, the sister so like what, you did something like, of course, like put and, on your mask before assisting others. Yeah, it's like it's such, it's as like it's it's a question that's only going to create more conflict is would be my response. Like you're not <laughs> you're definitely not doing any favors to resolve tension by asking a question like that. And it was the sister who's like continually tried to like stir the shit who asked that question. Sure. But I don't think our caller has really tried to sit down with her sister she mentioned that she didn't take the advice to address it. She showed up and there's clearly this tension. I bet her sister feels this tension too. And now it's, it's a, she said, she said situation. And now it's creating an animosity. And now what it sounds like to me is now all they're interested in doing, including her caller, and I could be hearing her wrong, is trying to like, they're trying to have people take their side. They want the vile trials. They're, they're, they're deciding who's right based on who will take their side. Friends, parents. Yeah, they're enlisting all these it's other getting people. Catty and, it, and like you need to sit down and like, so dear caller, if you're not going to come on mediation, get your sister to do it. And if you're not, here's, what, here's my advice. You just, as Justin Long would say, lead with love. You got to take your pride out of it. You got to take your hurt out of it. And then you just got to say, listen, I love you. And whatever we're going through, I would like us to not have this conflict in our relationship. And I'd love to figure out a way we can sit down and have a conversation face to face to do this and not in bringing in friends and family and getting a bunch of opinions. Yeah. And if you are going to get a mediation, either pick a random fucking podcast host like me or like a third party in all seriousness, like a third party person who doesn't know you and you can't ask questions about shit like that. that it's not so, so unproductive. It sounds like a fight that happened on the ultimatum. Get your sister to do a mediation call with us. That'd be amazing. 
Online shopping isn't slowing down anytime soon. And is your business ready to keep up with the pace? Well, I know we are over at Natural Habits because we're using ShipStation. Listen, I don't care what size your business is or if you're doing any type of shipping for a website of any kind, ShipStation is the way to go. Everything that has to do with shipping, they help you out with. Uh, tracking your packages, giving you insights, updates for your customers. The best part is, is like, that helps you save money. They, you get the same shipping prices that uh, you would if you were a uh, Fortune 500 company. A lot of access to a lot of great tools. Uh, it syncs with multiple platforms. We use Shopify. Many people use that, so it's it's integrates with that very easily. So if you are doing any type of business uh, from a website or out of your home, use ShipStation. And the best part is about ShipStation, you can try it for free for 60 days. You just use a code. You don't even need to put down a credit card. Use my code VIALL. Get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in V-I-A-L-L. ShipStation, make ship happen. No one knows what you're looking for in a doctor better than you. ZocDoc is Yelp for doctors. It is so easy. You put in your insurance. You put in exactly what you're looking for. I literally used ZocDoc before I ever worked for this podcast, and it rocks. You just give them all your information. You can book an appointment right there. You can read reviews about doctors. Genuine user. This is a testimonial right Nailed here. Nailed it. Yeah, this is this a is, testimonial. I can hear your passion about truth. like, yeah, it's just like, it's just simple facts, people. It's free also. I'm looking at two people right here who are perfect candidates for ZocDoc. And um, I know a lot of my audience who you are. You're perfect for this. Go to ZocDoc.com slash V-I-A-L-L and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. ZocDoc.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Let's get to our callers. Question time with me. Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. How's it going? Good. My name is Sam. I'm 24. How can I help, Sam? So it's a it's a very long story. I'll give you the um, the short version. You actually uh, reminded me I was having this dilemma on your Bachelor Recap podcast when you were talking about um, Teddy and Clayton on their one on one. So what did um, I, say? I thought it was interesting. Uh, you, you were like, uh, Teddy was like, oh, it's not a big deal that I'm a virgin. And Clayton was like, it's a huge deal that she's a virgin. <laughs> and you were like, I, I don't know, you said something. You were like, oh, I wonder how it feels to like be in a s- situation like this or something. Oh, okay. um, so I, I am a virgin. So, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm like Teddy. I related with her pretty pretty well. Um, Same age, same situation. Like I'm not religious. I was just waiting for like to be in love with the right person. Um, So I've been dating my boyfriend for two years now, decided it was, you know, a good time. Uh, So I told him, I was like, oh, I feel like I'm ready. And he was kind of like, he's not um, a virgin. He was kind of like, this is like such a big deal for you. And I was like, what? (laughs) Like, no, no, it's not. Two years. Yeah, yeah. We did long distance for a little bit. So it's not like we're like with how, each other all the time. How old's your boyfriend? Um, he, he's my, well, he's 25. Okay. So, so yes, even he's when so you first, sweet. <laughs> when, you first started, when you first started dating, obviously it came up, yeah? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, we do other things. Uh, mm-hmm. We just haven't had like, you know, actual sex yet. Uh, he was cool with it. He, I don't think he really knew. Uh, I didn't even know like what I was waiting for necessarily. I just knew that it would like feel right. Um, in the beginning, I thought like, oh, I just want to be in love. And then like, uh, I think like six months in, I told him I loved him, but like, I still wasn't totally ready. I was like, maybe I just like, need more time to like, you know, this love needs to withstand like the test of time. So uh, we did long distance and everything was great. So um, he moved back near me now and I just thought it would be like a good time. So I told him that I was ready, but he had some performance issues when I told him that. I guess I uh, worked it up for the past two years to be like this big moment. He was like uh, not really able to perform. So I was like, that's fine. Wait, you, but like, like the balls in. Did he tell you this or like you found out and he was like, like, did you guys attempt to have sex? Yeah, yeah, we tried. Um, but it was just like, I think he, when I told, we, 
we were like making out and I was like, oh, like I, I feel like ready. And he was like, oh, like, I'm like, are you sure? Like, I'm, I'm I, I don't think he was like expecting it. Cause it's been two years where like, I haven't obviously said anything. So I think I like really, um, threw him for a curveball and he was like uh, he was like are you like really sure and I was like yeah like what why not like I I was like relaxed and ready but I think I put like so much pressure for him so um he like instantly I I guess like he was so nervous like the mood was like instantly killed um I could tell he was like embarrassed I was like oh like don't be worried but like the ball's in your court now like I want you to know that like I'm ready, like whenever you feel right. So um, we've been intimate like twice since that happened and like it never progressed to like uh, sex yet. So I was just wondering, like, I mean, I'm not like demanding it. I'm not like, why won't you have sex with me? But um, I, I, I guess I just was always like media. You hear how like the guys, like they'll just like jump when you say like that you're ready. And I, I guess I wasn't like expecting this uh, response. So. Well, uh, I mean, you're, you're dating a guy who, and good for him. I mean, but like when you're, when you date, I think most people nowadays in their 20s, if especially if they've lost their virginity, being in a relationship and waiting is not always easy to do. And a lot of people aren't interested in doing that. So they move on, you know, like you're he's 25 or 24. I lost my virginity in high school and then I met my first girlfriend. Right. And she was a virgin. And so we waited a year and a half, you know, like so I was I wasn't a virgin, but like she she was and at that point I was so inexperienced. I was like, yeah, of course. Like, I don't even feel like I, you know, like I had sex, but like technically I did, you know, but like, you know what I'm saying? He's a little older now, but you clearly found a guy who is clearly very respectful of, you know, you and your needs. And it wasn't, it doesn't seem like it was a big deal for him to wait. Like it didn't seem like he was pressuring at all in those two years that you guys weren't having sex. Correct. Mm -hmm. You know, like he, um, we, we would talk about it, um, like throughout, um, I kind of only share it with like the person that I'm dating, like as far as my friends and like, uh, close friends and family go, like as far as they're concerned, like it's none of their business. So I try not to make it too much of like my, I feel like virgins can sometimes like make it their personality that like they're virgins. So, um, I try to just share it with like the person that I'm with and, uh, you know, I felt like my needs were like being met and, you know, other things that we were doing. So it didn't seem like a um huge like deal to me to take the next step like so early um but yeah he he's always been like on board with um whenever I just like I guess maybe I could have been more vocal with him about like when I'd be ready because I think I like totally caught him like off guard like I don't know if he thought I was waiting till like an engagement or marriage or like you know what but um now I just don't know what to do. Cause now I feel like every time we're like intimate, I'm like expecting, <laughs> expecting it to go further. And I don't want to um, put pressure on like either of our ends, but I yeah, feel like. I don't think you need to stress I, out yeah. about it. I mean, it sounds like he's definitely um, self-conscious about taking your virginity. Mm-hmm. And I think there is a lot of like um, social stigmas around it. And, you know, like, that episode with with the Teddy and Clayton's a perfect example of like, you know, like as a guy, we you know we always hear how how many shitty guys are are out there, and so there's a lot of guys who don't want to be that guy, right? And so you want to make sure you're being very respectful. You've obviously waited for the right moment and the right time and the right not even the right guy, but the right type of love, right? And so there is, you know, I think a built in kind of hesitation of, of uncertainty that he has maybe about the future or his life. I don't know how much you guys talk about like getting engaged or married or things like that, but it's like, what if this doesn't work out? Is she going to, is she going to regret it? I don't want to, I don't want to be responsible for that type of, of burden, you know, like Mm -hmm. I, I just, you know, it's like, I just want to have sex. <laughs> I yeah. don't know if I want to be the person, like, I don't, I don't know if I can, 
you know, it's like you've built up and at least communicated to him on some level that you don't want, you don't want sex or your first time having sex or sex at all to be a waste almost. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like, it sounds like indirectly, and maybe it was, you didn't intend, intend this, that like having sex with you is the, like getting married or like a wedding in a way, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, he wants to respect what it means to you is my guess. And so there's a lot of anxiety. Now, rationally, he knows that's not what you're asking. You know what I'm saying? Like he knows mm -hmm. that. Uh, but I think, you know, uh, subconsciously, at least that's what his dick thinks. Yeah. His dick's like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Are we ready to get married? <laughs> and I don't know. He's like, well, I'm, you know what? I, I'll help us both out. I'm just not going to work. And I think all you can do, uh, if you're comfortable with it, is I think you need it. If you really want to have sex, and if this is your guy, as far as just the sex goes, I think you kind of have to take the reins here. I think you really need to, like, you know, I don't want to pressure him, but just say, like, listen, I, whenever you're ready, I really, like you said, balls in your court. And, mm -hmm. and be patient with him. And like the fact that it's not working, the dick's not working right now is definitely anxiety. And that can happen to anyone. There's definitely nothing wrong with him. It's nothing for him to be ashamed or embarrassed about. Like nothing will make a dick go soft more than anxiety. Uh, it is, it really is, <laughs> it is a guy you're just like, what? what is wrong with me? And it's just like, when you feel stressed out, like it, it just, it goes away. Um, and so whatever you can do to just, you know, make it more like, I just make it about the passion, make it about like, I'm just turn, turned on to, you know, try to make it about the sex, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, try to make it, if you're okay with it, a little less for even romantic, you know, like if this is a guy that you trust and love and that you expect to keep dating him, I don't know if everyone's going to agree with me, but like there, there could be a time for like the candles and the romance and the rose petals. And maybe that's not your first time because all that is going to do is just make the moment feel that much more intense and special. And like, that's, that's, that's what you're both seem to trying to avoid. Like you just, I think you, you kind of almost need to just do it. And, and you that, both that's are like, what I was trying to, yeah. yeah. But he, that's what I thought, yeah. but now I don't know if he's like waiting for like the right moment or like we're um, supposed to go on this like European trip in like a month and a half. So I'm like, I don't know if he's like waiting <laughs> for like Ask him. So you know, something. Talk to him. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's your know. boyfriend. He's been for two years. Go on a, watch the sunset in the car and do it in the backseat of a car where it's kind of awkward and uncomfortable, but you're just like, it's, you're kind of caught up in the moment. You know, mm -hmm. like kind of throw yourself at them. I honestly like get you guys, get you, each other kind of super turned on. I don't know. Hot tub. Some, I don't know. Something that kind of just gets the blood flowing and just makes you guys mm -hmm. just kind of want each other and just, just do it. Story worth. Make those memories last a lifetime. You got Mother's Day. You got Father's Day coming up. Maybe you have a grandparent you want to connect with. Story worth is an online service that helps you and your loved ones connect through sharing stories and memories and preserve them for years to come. I've told you many times. I've, I gave it to my dad. I always loved growing up listening to my dad and my aunts and uncles share stories about their childhood. And now you can make that into a memorable keepsake. So basically how it works is... You give it as a gift, and then every week, StoryWorth will send emails to the, your loved one, maybe your mom for Mother's Day, of a thought-provoking question of your choice from a vast pool of possible options, and then it gets them talking. And after one year, StoryWorth compiles all of those questions and stories, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book the whole family can share for generations. Give all the moms in your life a meaningful gift you'll both cherish for years. StoryWorth, right now, for a limited time, you'll save $10 on your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash V-I-A-L-L. -L. That is S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash V-I-A-L-L -L to save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash V-I-A-L-L. -L. I lost sunglasses just last weekend in Vegas when I went to go make a bet. Yeah, but thank God I got my blenders because you know what? They're 
stylish. They look expensive, super affordable. Chase Fisher started Blenders uh, by selling his beachy shades out of a backpack while doubling as a surf instructor on Pacific Beach. Well, that's important. He's a surfer. Tri- you want to buy sunglasses from a surfer. Unlike expensive big brand shades that are probably lost and smashed in the past, blenders are actually affordable. So you're not going to cry as much as when you, you know, inevitably lose them. Blender's team of in-house designers are constantly coming out with new styles from orange polarized wraparounds, tortoise shell frames, which I have. And it's not just sunglasses. Blender has prescription glasses, readers in blue lights, fashion frames also, if you want to, you know, just look smart, as well as a, a snow collection of goggles and accessories. Live life in forward motion with Blenders today. You can score 15% off your Blenders purchase. Visit BlendersEyewear.com and enter promo code V-I-A-L-L-V-I-P. That's BlendersEyewear.com, code VILVIP for 15% off. Blenders rocked with pride worldwide. But I think you kind of have to try to set that mood and kind of set that atmosphere and kind of creative things and all while letting them know, like, listen, I just... I don't need it to be special. I just want to, I just want to have sex with you. Like, it's cool. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I, I don't want to break up with you. I hope we, who knows? We're, we've been together for two years. I hope to spend the rest of my life with you, but I don't know if we will, but I still want to have sex with you. And honestly, maybe a conversation like that might make him a little less stressed because I, I don't think, I don't think you should even read into it and be like, Oh, does that mean he's, he's, he's worried about breaking up with me? I, mm-hmm. I, I think he's just really wants to respect what it means to you. And this is, it is a lot of pressure um, especially if, you know, he cares about you and he doesn't want you to be disappointed or regret it. And it's, and it's you just letting him know, listen, whatever happens between us in the future, all I know is I want to have sex with you. Don't even say I want mm-hmm. you to be my first. Just, I, I just want to have sex with you. It's weird now for me too. Cause I feel like now every time, um, since there's been like two times after where like nothing kind of escalated. Now I feel like every time, uh, like it's in my mind, like, is he going to like make a move? So I never wanted to like have to be the one to make a move. And I don't want to like keep talking about it to like, have it be this like weird plan thing where like, okay, on Saturday night, we're going to do it. Cause like, I never pictured it being like that, but yeah, I never um, pictured like telling my boyfriend that like I was ready. And then like, a month going by and like still like w- waiting, I guess. Like I always thought like whenever I said I was ready, they would just like, like snap like that. But uh, yeah, yeah I mean, the expectation. This, this, this is the same guy who didn't really pressure you for two years, who mm-hmm. was comfortable with waiting. And he, to do that, he kind of was, took a very passive and respectful approach to the, the like physical intimacy that you guys had. So he's kind of in that state of mind. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's a, I think you, I think you should, you know, take the reins. I think you really should instigate it. I think you should like start making out of them and literally put it, it. in. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know yeah. what else to say. Um, and just, yeah, make it kind of a hot moment because imagine like, you know, here you are the virgin, you waited and the respectful guy, it's just like, okay, are you ready? Are you okay? Are you comfortable? You know, we, uh, so many men don't check in and aren't present that the ones that you do, like he's going to, he's going to want to be that good guy and he's going to kind of overdo it because he's going to want to make sure you're okay. And I think you just have to let him know that you are okay by showing him like, I just want to do this. Let's do it. As long as he's okay with it and you have his consent, <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like you're just saying we're yeah. doing this and I want this. I want you. I feel bad for like almost the situation that I put him in. I mean, obviously like Mm. I wasn't ready, so I can't like, you know, I hate myself for that, but like, would it have been easier if like when we met, like the first time we were doing things, like it probably like would have been. Such an irrelevant question for you to ask yourself. It doesn't matter. I'm fairly confident that once you guys are able to finally have sex, you'll have a bunch of sex. It'll be great. You'll have it all the time and you will laugh with each other about how much stress you put on e- one another. You, you just will. It's mm-hmm. just, it's a, I hope so. <laughs> it's, I'm confident. It's a, our society puts a lot of pressure and stigma and shame around sex. And when we build it up, we, we want it to be special and I get why, but, and I'm not saying it shouldn't be special, but you know, unless you have some sort of like strong religious beliefs around it, 
it's you'll realize that while it is special, it doesn't have to be put on this pedestal and you can just kind of have sex with your partner and enjoy it and and you guys will go nuts on your trip. I I definitely do it before your trip. So you can have yeah, a bunch that. of sex on the trip. You know, mm -hmm. and it can not be <laughs> awkward and weird and you guys can enjoy each other. But Yeah. Definitely. I thought it was funny when I was watching the the bachelor and then listening to your podcast. And, uh, I just like loved Clayton's reaction when she was like, it's not a big deal. And he was like, this is a big deal for her. I was like, I feel like that's like my life right now. When I finally spent like 24 years, like accepting, uh, and then he's like, are you sure? Like, this is huge. And I'm like, it's not, <laughs> it's not anymore. Yeah. He's just, he just wants to be a good, respectful guy. And he just, he doesn't, and I think there's a part of him is worried about like disappointing you or if it doesn't work out, if it's going to be something you're going to regret and let it, you know, it doesn't sound like you will. It sounds like you have a very level headed approach about this. Sure. You wanted it to be special. You found the right guy. You recognize that who knows what's going to happen in the future, but you're ready. I'm going to see him on um, Saturday. Do I like say anything leading up to it? Do I just like see like what I mean, happened Saturday? I don't think there's any know. wrong answer, <laughs> but yes, I would start making out with them. When you guys get physical like you normally do, I think you should try to have sex with them mm -hmm. and, you know, check in and make sure he's comfortable with it. But like, you know, embrace the moment, get all excited, do things that get him aroused and then just take the next step you know it's like I don't, know, don't 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 let enough time go to psych yourself out you know just jump mm -hmm. in so to speak you know just don't don't think about how cold the water is going to be just jump in and you'll be fine you know um and i think that's that's probably the best way and if it does come up if let's say he calls you today and says hey i want to talk about the past couple of times i think you should let him know that this is something you want to do for yourself. I want to have sex. It's not about you being mm -hmm. the, I mean, listen, I'm glad you are my first. I like <laughs> not you, about you. But it's not about <laughs> you. It's about the fact that I am ready and I want to have sex with you. So like, let's mm -hmm. go, you know, um, and kind of try to downplay this. Like, I, I think he's worried about him being the one, mm -hmm. you know, like you want to have sex. He just happens to be the guy you're willing to have sex with. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know just kind of make it about that take the pressure off yeah that's good well wish me luck <laughs> I, I think you guys are gonna be just fine once you once you guys have it it'll you will um certain laugh about how much pressure you guys put on one another and yeah, not that you guys did so. it it's just it's a, <laughs> just just world yeah i'll be shocked if if i'm not right <laughs> about this all right take care thanks all right bye, bye how's it going good how are you good What's your name? I am Annie. How old are you, Annie? I'm 29. How can I help? Well, I guess it's been two months now, but went through a breakup. We dated about a year and it was probably the best relationship I've ever been in. And prior to that, I was in a five-year relationship. And the last year with the guy that I just recently dated blew that relationship out of the park. I felt like I've never been so compatible with someone. We actually met on Hinge back in December of 2020, and he wasn't even living in Florida yet where I live. And he kind of was, he was living in New York City. His company was relocating him. And he just said, I put my location as Florida because I didn't think it would be fair to continue to meet women knowing I'm leaving. And so it was nice because we just kind of got to talk for a month before the pressure of meeting in person or anything. And we got to do like a FaceTime call. And then finally, January of last year, we met in person, went on our first date when he moved here. And it was great. Like from that point on, we were kind of together. Again, I've never been in a relationship that was just so easy. We got along his family was wonderful. The, his, like the people he introduced me were great. We kind of integrated our lives really well. He actually moved into the building directly across the street from me. So we were able to spend a lot of time together and he works in sales. So he kind of forewarned me that Q4 in his industry, he gets super stressed out and just the month of November is kind of a hard month for him. And his like sole focus is work. 
I was like, that's fine. Like it'll happen. And so around Halloween, he, his manager kind of approached him and was like, if you hit all of your sales goals to the end of the year, you're going to be the first ever sales manager. We're going to promote you because it's a smaller company. So they're expanding enough to get to that point where they can have teams and managers. And then from that point on coming into November, which she already warned me was a hard month. He just got so stressed out with work. And again, I find a man that's passionate about their industry and work attractive. So I didn't think anything of it. And then right before Thanksgiving, he finally got the promotion. And then it was just talking to him. He would just randomly zone out and I'd be like, what's going on? And he'd be like, oh, I'm thinking of strategy. And he just like, couldn't turn work brain off. And he also negotiated whatever deals he closes by March, he would get his full commission on. So he felt like he, things he had said, like he feels like he's working two jobs. He felt like he was drinking through a water hose, learning this new job that no one's ever done before at his company. And then from there, it kind of spiraled into, I never took the time to establish my own life because we got into a relationship so quickly when he moved here. And it was just like one thing after the other. And yeah, like I was just like, because he never could tell me what the root of the problem was. I was like, is it work? And he's like, I'm stressed. But he's like, I just feel like I'm struggling. Like he had brought up wanting to get a therapist. He just wasn't ever to identify what actually was bothering him. And like he said, he's like, I want to seek out a therapist. He had struggled years previous with depression. And I don't really, he never shared details about it with me. So I don't really know what that time period looked like for him. Um, And so he kind of like every week, it was something different. I'm (laughs) stressed out at work and I'm not working out enough. Maybe I need to find a way to alleviate stress. And then it turned into, well, when I'm stressed, I feel like I don't really have a buddy I can call up to grab a beer with. Like, I feel like I never really took the time to establish my own life. And then how old is this guy? He's also 29. Okay. And then it kind of turned like I, when I care about someone, whether in a relationship, friend, family, like I just go into this fix it mode where I'm like, okay, I can't help you with your job. So I'm going to make it easier when you get off work. So like I would make sure the groceries or dinner was planned for the week, just little things. So when he got home, he could relax and wanting to establish his own life. Like he loves sports and he kept talking about wanting to join like adult sports leagues. And so I, again, I can't make you make friends. So I would like send him the link to local sporting things that he could join to play hockey or lacrosse or all these different things. Like we were on a, uh, co-ed softball team together like we were very active and traveled and did a lot this last year and so but then he just never would take the next step to do it like he didn't get the therapist he didn't join any of those leagues he wasn't like putting himself out there to make friends and he's like well maybe that's not the problem and I'm like okay like again like trying to find solutions and then after Thanksgiving it was okay but then I just felt like I was completely on edge. So, so we'd hang out, things would be great. But then I could just see that he was like zoning out or thinking about work or checking emails. Like we would go out and do something fun and he would just use it as a way to like network and be like, he'd send an email if we were at like the hockey game and be like, look where I am. If you're ever in town, I'll host you. Like it was just nonstop work which again, I understand, but there's also like a time and place where you can put your phone away for a couple hours in a day. And then towards the end, like he asked for like a couple days just to like decompress. And I was like, okay. And then we'd hang out again. It would be fine. But then with me, like going into this, like fix it solution mode, he just, I could feel him pushing away. And then he started saying like, he felt codependency in the relationship. And I was like, I just don't know that fine line between like when your person's struggling, not in some way, shape or form feeling the distance or the pain or wanting to help that person. And so into December, like we took two weeks off, like a break, completely no 
a little communication here and there just because it was Christmas. Like December is a hard month for me because my mom passed away that month six years ago. So I'm already a little, not a little, a lot on edge the month of December with the holidays and everything. And so he like would make comments. Like he texted me on the anniversary of her passing and was like, you're so amazing. Like I'm strong. I'm sorry. I haven't been able to be strong enough for you during this time. And then when he got back from visiting his family for the holidays, he texted me and was like, Hey, I'm back in town. Like, can we hang out tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then hanging out, I guess, meant him coming over to break up with me. And in that breakup, I asked him, I'm like, what did you think about during that two weeks? Like what, like he even showed up at my place with like the Christmas present he bought me and like nothing about, I don't know, I guess I know breakups are premeditated. I'm not naive to think you just, he woke up and broke up with me. Like, obviously he had been thinking about it, but I asked him, I was like, what decisions led you or thought process led you to this decision? He, he's like, I don't know. I can't tell. Like, he just couldn't articulate his feelings. And I asked him, I was like, okay, is this permanent? Are you okay with this? And he's like, I don't know. I just know I need time. Like this back and forth is too much for me. I'm like, it's too stressful. And then he broke up with me. And so with everything with my mom and the back and forth with him, I was just like in a very bad mental state. So I went to my doctor and they were like, well, why don't we temporarily put you on an antidepressant just to like ease come some of this anxiety you're feeling. You can just be on it a couple months till things like settle down and then you can start weaning off of it. And I was like, okay, I went that shit crazy on this medicine. I hated it. Like the month of January was just a wash. I just felt awful. And so like, and he knew that I was like going crazy. And so like, he made a comment that was like, I feel like this is past the point of repair. And I, at the time that he was saying that, I didn't know that I was having these like crazy effects of the medicine, which I understand it's kind of like a trial and error when you go on that medicine to find the right one. Um, and so like with the breakup, not having like all of a sudden being perfect and then all of a sudden not for like when, a month. When you got on the medication, then, was it mostly based off of your sadness over the relationship and the breakup or were you experienced like just general depression? I struggle with really bad anxiety. And so I just felt, and like now I've talked to doctors and therapists and they were like, anxiety is very different than depression. They should have probably prescribed you like the low dose anxiety medication instead of yeah. full blown antidepressant. But I just listened to what my doctor told me they sure. thought would be best. Um, are, you on it? are you off it now? Yeah, I'm officially off of it. So I started feeling like back to my normal self starting in February. But in the back of my mind, I'm just, I don't, again, like I know he probably put a lot more thought into this than he gave me information on, but I just don't understand how things could have been so great. And then all of a sudden, like something as exciting as a promotion should have been something to celebrate, but he, I just feel like he, his stress level spiraled from there. And then he just like was almost unrecognizable the month of December and then the breakup. And then like, I did reach out when I was really struggling in January, just kind of like, you were my best friend for like a year, like just as someone to talk to. And he just, I don't want to say dismissed me. He, he tried to talk to me a little bit, but then I think he understood that nothing he was saying was going to make me feel better. And so that's when he was kind of like, we're at the, like past the point of repair. And then when I'm like in that mindset, I'm just like, was this even repairable? And I like, my mind goes in circles from there. I don't know. Like I, I care about, I still care about him so much. Like I've been having a lot of fun being single. Cause I mean, you have to keep busy, make friends. Like I've been having a great time, but in the back of my mind, I just, one, I miss him and not, and I know I'm not entitled to closure, but not really knowing what happened or even him being able to say, this is definitive. Like, I, I just don't understand how being stressed at work or wanting friends or the reasons he somewhat gave me have anything to do with relationship. It was like, he almost couldn't manage all of it at one time. 
And then I struggle with like, like our last conversation in January, like how badly it went and how like erratic I felt that being like our last point of communication. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel for you. I mean, I've, I, I, I've, I've been in your shoes before, uh, which I'm sure many people listening have, and it sucks. There's really no, you know, there's no magic pill, um, or thing that's just going to make it go away. And a lot of things you're struggling with is they're all normal questions, but like the, uh, the answer is there. It's just, it's just hard to, for you to see, right? Like, do I, I don't like have a clear answer, but like, as you were telling the story and he was like, oh, I, you know, I want to make new friends or I want to, or maybe I should get therapy and here you are sending him links and things like that. And he was not following through with it. Well, that is the answer. That wasn't really the problem. Now, I don't know what the problem, in, you know, specifically was, but ultimately the problem was the relationship for him as, as hard as that might be to hear, you know, and I don't say not you, but just the relationship and there, you know, he moved and there is something to be said about the fact that, um, very conveniently, uh, he was talking to you, liked you, had a great thing with you so much that fuck it, you know, and I don't think it, it probably wasn't a coincidence and he moved across the street you know, it, you probably gave him some recs or something, or he saw a listing for, you know, he visited you and you're like, Oh, I guess this, I'll move here. Sure. Why not? You know, like it probably wasn't a total coincidence. And, and after a year, I think he just decided, you know, he didn't, he decided he will, a, he didn't know what he wanted and maybe what he wanted wasn't you. Meanwhile, it was pretty clear to him that you knew what you wanted and that was him and the relationship and what he wanted to prioritize wasn't you or the relationship, but was himself and the job, you know, and it's easy in some of your position to say, well, why, why, why would a promotion change our relationship? That should be a happy thing. It, yeah. But it really wasn't about him. Uh, the promotion. The promotion created more responsibility and more tasks. He's obviously very career driven right now. It's very important to him. It doesn't seem like it's a priority for him to have work life balance. You know what I'm saying? He's not willing to sacrifice uh, what he wants for his career for anything else in his personal life right now. It doesn't seem like. And if he has to make sacrifices, maybe if he wants more friends, he's more willing to sacrifice you in the relationship than the job. Like he only has so much bandwidth for his personal life because he's unwilling to, you know, uh, sacrifice any efforts he has towards his professional life. I mean, that's and, what, I, and I get that. Yeah. And I would never tell him or friends, anyone to sacrifice their career. I understand you can't really. Actually, I disagree. You should. A... You should sometimes. I mean, like, that's the thing. You're, you're very trying, you're trying to be the very understanding girlfriend and you're even is his ex-girlfriend trying to be understanding. There is nothing wrong with being in a relationship and setting a boundary and expectation saying, I, I, I need more from you. I, I do. Like, I need you to put your phone away. You know, I need you to, have boundaries when it comes to your work life. I, I don't want to just be dating someone where I get their leftovers, even if it's from work. And there's nothing wrong with saying that. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's where you need to recognize that it is okay for you to say that. And I think you recognizing that will help you get over this relationship better because right now you're in this state of mind of, of focusing on how things shifted because of the, the pro, uh, of, of the promotion and your mindset is, well, I, I want to be the understanding girlfriend. I want to be the supportive girlfriend. I want to be the fixer. I don't want to, you know, a girlfriend shouldn't get in the way, you know, I don't want to get in the way of his hard work. And I do, I do love a guy who is career driven and motivated, of course. But like, as with everything else, like, you know, 
life is about balance. Extremes of anything could be, you know, it's like you could say, well, I, I, I love, I want a guy who's passionate and, and good in bed, but maybe he's so like sexually driven that he's like obsessed with porn or, you know, going to strip clubs, you know what I'm saying? But like, that, you know, mm-hmm. so I want a guy who's sexual doesn't necessarily have to mean that you want a guy who's obsessed with porn and strip clubs. You know what I'm saying? So like, I want a guy who has a work, good work ethic and motivated in his career doesn't mean that you have to accept a guy who doesn't know how to turn that off and still prioritize other things in his life. Like, you know, you or the relationship, or if you guys were to have kids someday and things like that, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And I think you recognizing that you were giving too much without expecting enough in return will make you see him and this relationship you had a little bit differently. You opened up by saying how this relationship was so much better than your first one of five years. Great. That doesn't mean this is your guy. You know, my first relationship was off and on for seven years. And the second one, there were aspects of it that were better, especially in that first year until she cheated on me. You know, but that first year, if, if you would have told me in the first year, it would have, it would have been a lot of things where I'm like, I have this better and I have that better. My third girlfriend, we dated for two and a half years. What was the best re- relationship I had of those three. And it was, she was awesome and great. And she still wasn't my person. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. uh, great that it was better, but just because it was better, doesn't mean you lost the one, you know what I'm saying? And so right now in this state of heartbreak and sadness, I think you really need to get your mind frame on thinking about the things that you, that actually you weren't in fact happy with. There's a lot of things in the relationship you weren't happy with, but you're not seeing it as something you weren't happy with. You are just focused on trying to empathize with him and his state of mind so that you can figure out a way to fix it. And yeah, that's exactly you have what to I'm doing. <laughs> stop empathizing with his point of view and you have to start focusing on your point of view. Mm-hmm. And when you go back and replay those past few months in the relationship, you got to change the lens in which you're seeing it. And, and you have to say to yourself, I want someone who can be there for me as much as I'm willing, willing to be there for them if I'm going through a hard time. Uh, I want someone who won't just constantly complain about things, but they're, if they're going to like struggle with something, they're willing to do something about it, either on their own or take the help I offer them. I mean, whew. I mean, it is tough to be in a relationship with someone who wants to complain about everything and never wants to do anything about it. There's a lot of people like that. You know, they don't want to get it on their own way. They just like to, and you know who they complain about, you know who they complain to the most? Their partners. You know, you've only dated this guy for a year. I mean, Mm -hmm. imagine being married to a guy like that with kids who just kind of vents to you about the things they're not satisfied with, but never really does anything about it. Yeah. And then I ended up getting called codependent because of like how much it was all affecting me. Yeah. So while this relationship might've been better than the first one, you only did this guy for a year and a half. That's not a great deal of time. And in that relationship, you know, he moved. Right. And there, there, mm-hmm. there, you have to take that into consideration too. You, you have to take into consideration that he, he wasn't really settled. A lot of this was all new. And if anyone was, he was codependent on you to help you acclimate himself, help him acclimate himself to f- being in Florida, you know? Yeah. And I asked him when we first met, I was like, you just moved here. Like, are you sure you want to like get into a relationship? He's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, I've been single for X amount of years. Like this is like the phase of life that I'm in. Like I want to meet my person, blah, blah, blah. And like, even when like throughout the, when we started getting to that point, cause it started like only hanging out on weekends and then it turned into slowly up until every day, just he lives across the street. So it was easy to have dinner together. And I asked him like multiple times. I'm like, when we started hanging out every day and I'm like, if you need, like, we're kind of forming a routine, like at any point you need time to yourself or whatever the case may be, like, you just have to tell me. And he's like, 
he knows I have anxiety and like his response was like, I want to see you every day. Like, I like you. I like spending my time with you. And so I even extended the, at the beginning, like, I know this is a lot or when like we started hanging out every day, making sure like I acknowledge, like, I don't want you to think like you're obligated just because we're forming this routine. Like I'm, I never care. Like it also bothers me. Like you said, like someone being so negative, like when I look at the year that he and I had, like, we did so much together, but we did a lot of things separately. Like he went on all these extravagant trips, his work sent him to Europe, like all these different things. And so like, just for him being so stressed and feeling like he didn't take the time to establish his own life. I'm like, what does that even look like then? Because you, like, we both did so much this last year. That's a good question, right? But you should ask Mm -hmm. yourself that, not him. You know what you're kind of describing? You know how, like, uh, when, um, let's say two friends are planning a trip, or not, that's the thing, it's one person has an idea of a trip, right? And this one person wants to go on a trip, but they don't want to go alone. So they plan a trip and they find a friend who's willing to go on a trip with them that they planned. And there's a lot of people like that. Like, I'm not a plan. It's just like, yeah, if you invite me on a trip, I'll, I'll go. Like, it's to just <laughs> can you book my ticket? <laughs> like, I, I'm fine. I'll book my own ticket. But like, you do the rest, you know? Um, and they'll go along with it. That's, you, you, that, you're, that's, that's how your relationship sounds. He was willing to go along with it, Right. You were the planner of the relationship. You prioritized the relationship. You came up with all the things that you guys did in the relationship and did together. And when things were bad and stressful, you came up with solutions. And he was just, he just showed up for the party. He wasn't really willing to do any of the, his, his, he was focused on the work and his life and these other trips. And you, you were the only one focused on the relationship. That's how it sounds to me, the way you describe it. He was just willing to show up. He was just willing to be your girlfriend, you know? But when when was he ever really willing to, like, prioritize the relationship or make a sacrifice for the relationship and realize that maybe, like, ah, dude, you know what? Things were really good, but, like, this, we're going through a rough patch. What do I, what can I do to make sure this, we get through this rough patch? He doesn't seem like he's willing to do much of anything at all. As it, he was willing to be in the relationship with you until it was inconvenient for him. Yeah, that's exactly kind of what I told him. I was like, we, we've like never argued. This is a normal bump in the road that you get through together. And only if he's just, only if two people are willing to get through it together. But you know, you yeah. recognize you have this fixer mindset and you were, you were, you were doing a hundred percent of your half and trying to do 30, 40% of his and all <laughs> you were expecting of him was to show up. That was your only expectation of him is to kind of just, you know, be there and, and be like pleasant, but you, you didn't really need him to do much of else, any of the, of, of anything else. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so now when you think about that, I'm only saying that is like, stop looking through this relationship through rose colored glasses. Like I'm not, the, the, don't waste energy getting mad at him or, or yourself about like, Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Or he played me or I was duped. That, that's just kind of a waste of your energy at this point. It was what it was. I, I don't feel a, that way. Yeah. Well, good. I, I, like, I, I still think like, I think he's a great person. I have nothing bad to say about him, but, um, but the, I just think yeah. the relationship wasn't as great as you are remembering it right now. It's, it's yeah. not as confusing as, as it was when you first called in, you know what I'm saying? Like there, are, there is a version of this where you should have realized that you weren't getting what you wanted out of this and you left him not because he's a bad guy or anything like that, but you just were like, Hey, listen, if, if you're going to be my person, I need so much more from you. You took care of the whole relationship. All, uh, all he did was show up mm-hmm. again. He was just kind of willing to be your girlfriend, his, your boyfriend. You know, he, he didn't have the bandwidth or energy or interest to make the relationship priority. You know, he went on the trip that his friend planned for him. 
organized. Yeah, he went on all like he did bachelor was, party. But you know what I'm parties. saying? Like, the, you know, yeah. He yeah, just, it was never because he planned it. You plan you and you even planned the relationship. Mm-hmm. I even just, planned out meals. <laughs> yeah. He was very much yeah. codependent on you, and 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 he probably felt that. But you, in the future, going forward, you have to set that boundary for yourself. Of, like, a, unless you want someone to be with you for that reason, it doesn't sound like you do. Mm-hmm. You can be a nurturing, loving partner, and still have your boundaries and limits. It's like, you know, what are the, you know. What are they doing for you early on? You know, like getting someone to date you just because like you're very convenient and nurturing to be around. Like it's easy for that person to take you for granted over time. Yeah, I I see that now. <laughs> well, good. Um, I mean, that's, you... that's good though. But part of your part part of your I hate to say problem is when you called in is I think you were still seeing this relationship through rose colored glasses and having a hard time accepting that like. Honestly, like as sad as I am about the relationship ending and as much as I love him, I, that's, that is not the type of relationship I want for myself forever. It was certainly better than my first one, but it's not as, it's not, it's, I can do better. You can start thinking that you can do better when it comes to the relationship that you had. It's not about doing better than him. It's just about, all right, here, what did I learn this relationship? I learned, you know, I liked what I had. I liked X, Y, and Z, but like, I don't, I don't. I want someone who wants to participate in our relationship as much as I participate in it. And he wasn't really participating in your relationship. He was, again, just, he was showing up to the party. You know, he wasn't being the friend mm-hmm. and the, you know, using the party analogy. It was like, Hey, can I bring something? Can I do anything? What can I do? Should I, can I show up and help you set up? Can I help you clean up when people leave? No, he was just the guest who like showed up a little bit late after the party kind of got popping and, and left as things kind of dwindled down, he didn't bring anything, didn't help the clean up. He just was there to be part of the entertainment as long as, you know, and that's not what you want for a relationship. Mm-mm. No. Cause I did a, a lot. Yeah. Like, even to the extent of planning outside of our relationship, helping with his family. Like I did like, and again, like I'm probably always going to be that way in a relationship, but understanding that boundary that I should also get that in return. Yes. And you should always be that way. That's a great thing. Someone is going to really appreciate that, Mm -hmm. but you still need to expect from them. You still have to be able to say, uh, well, you know, and that's, and, and when you meet someone in the future, you will be better at recognizing these patterns early on and you have to stop Mm -hmm. telling yourself, but it was so much better than the first one. Yeah. Well, Talking to you has made a lot more sense than a lot of money spent in therapy. <laughs> well, therapy is still good. Keep no, on, it's still keep, good. Keep I'm very therapy. much so an advocate for therapy. <laughs> um, all right. Well, hopefully this was helpful. It was. Thank you so much. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good. What's your name? Um, my name is Julia and I'm 24 years old. Hi, Julia. How can I help? Um, so I wanted to talk to you because I have been seeing this guy. So I started seeing him. We met on a dating app and we connected right away. Um, we were texting every single day, pretty much all day since we met, um, going on like one to two dates, I would say, uh, a week. And by the fourth date, I was like, I like this guy enough that I want to have sex with him. So I told him that I had genital herpes. Um, and I gave my little speech on genital herpes that I usually give. Um, and I wanted to do like a caveat to that because I feel like I'm in a good place with like my diagnosis and like how I feel about it. But I also recognize that there are like extreme emotions around herpes and I never really know going into it, like how someone's going to respond to it. So it feels like a big vulnerability for me to, I guess, to share. Um, and I think like usually in relationships, you share small vulnerabilities, build trust, vulnerabilities get bigger. Um, but with herpes, you kind of have to share it pretty early on and it's like, take it or leave it. Um, and that feels like heavy, I guess, and kind of creates like a power dynamic right away. 
anyway, so I tell him and he responds like perfectly. Like, I feel like my ideal way that you would respond, um, like immediately validating me, immediately telling me that, you know, it's not a big deal and that it's not a concern to him and that he knows he likes me, wants to continue to see me, feels like I'm knowledgeable and he feels like we can have conversations if he doesn't feel comfortable. Um, and he says like, he wants to have sex with me whenever I feel like it's good. Cause I, cause I usually like in my speech say like, take however long you want to take. Like if you have questions, like ask me anything. And he was like, whatever designated time you have, I'll take that, but I'm ready when you are. So I thought that was just like, so cool. I feel like it definitely increased my feelings for him. Cause I just found it super attractive. And I told him that. Um, and so two weeks go by more, like we're seeing each other more. Um, and I feel like at one month mark, I'm like, I like this guy. Um, I'm going on other dates, but like, I'm thinking about him and I am feeling like I don't want my time to be taken up with other people when I'm thinking about him. I also feel like it wasn't really like fair. So I told the other people that I was seeing that like, like I kind of cut it off. I stayed on dating apps, but like I wasn't actively trying to go on more dates, um, but also felt like I may be feeling like this because I just disclosed something big and I might be like just feeling vulnerable. So I waited to, to talk to him about it. We kind of had casual conversations about like, are you seeing other people? Um, but it was never like, I want what I want. And then um, by the two month mark, I was like, okay, I'm definitely starting to have feelings for have this you guy. With him yet? Yeah, we had sex. Yeah. Okay. We had sex like almost immediately after I disclosed, like the next sure. date we had sex, everything was fine. <laughs> two month mark. Um, I'm like, okay, I definitely know I like this guy and I feel like we have good communication. I was so confident we were on the same page. Like I just felt like confident going into it. And I was like, it, when the conversation comes up naturally, I'll tell them how I feel. And like I had, like, I love the podcast like I had the words of like define what you want in my head so we were at breakfast and I was like which is like not the right venue I'm realizing now um but uh I was like he we had gone out the night before and he was like how do you feel about it like are you um did you have a good time like I had such a good time with you and I was like yeah I'm really enjoying our time together I'm having a lot of fun and I feel like at this point I don't want to see other people and um I want to put all my dating energy into you and he was like uh <laughs> he um was basically ultimately what he said was like he wanted to continue to see me and he did like me but he said that he wanted to keep like his options open and uh that like he didn't want to commit to anything because he wanted to be sure when like he fully committed and I was like all right like that's totally fair and valid um but also like we're on obviously different pages so we each other anymore. <laughs> you said that you um, shouldn't see each other anymore. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Good for you. Okay. Um, yeah. I just, I, also, I, I like, like. I have no problem with doing it at breakfast. What, what, when. It was so awkward. It I mean, was so it was, awkward. It was awkward because you didn't get the answer you wanted. Yeah. 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 And I honestly like, I'm, I'm cool with awkward conversations. I feel like I'm good at them. And I, I think um, you, I think you did it the right way. And I think the awkwardness doesn't mean that you didn't. And I think it made you, uh, I would think, more sure of yourself and more confident, more powerful in his eyes. You know, if you do it over text, it, there's an element of fear, you know, avoidance. Yeah. And you didn't yeah. do that. So whether this works out eventually the way you want or not, it you did the right thing. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I... I feel like after I did it, I was like in my head, like, oh, should I have just waited longer? But now I'm trying to just tell myself, no, like you put up a boundary, like stick to it. And so he, um, so what, like, what, did I you feel, say, what do you say to that when you said we should no longer um, see each other? He was like, I feel like ultimately as much as I like you, I feel like at the end of the day, I need to date more. Mm -hmm. And if that's going to, I like, I don't want to waste your time. And I was like, that's fair. And then he was like, if he's like, I really like you though. So if you want to hang out as like friends anytime, like I'm happy to do that. And I just like, like the message. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to hang out with you as a buddy. Sorry. Um, and I'm, better you know, like heart. that. It's better than a heart. Yeah. But. I know. I, I like just listened to that episode, yeah. like the day after it happened. Cause it happened on Sunday. Okay, and yeah. I was like, Oh my God, that's funny. Um, uh, but, but thumbs up's way better than a heart though. Um, <laughs> sarcastic right like yeah. i'm like the, the heart is there's a it's i would prefer no response but I, it, the thumbs up not isn't bad <laughs> <laughs> okay 
Um, so, so this where is, I'm this, at this now. This Sunday. This is yeah, recent. like okay. it's very fresh. Yeah. And I am I like sadder get, than I. That's a game of chicken. <laughs> you think like I'm yes. trying, honestly, I'm trying not to be like hopeful that he messages me. I'm trying to be like, that's smart. It's fine. D- yeah. You don't, you got your answer. You go out. I mean, if you want to mourn the disappointment for a few days, fine. Yeah. But get back out there. Start dating. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to tell myself. Yeah. You know, I definitely believe in like, kind of like you're putting an energy out in the world that you're not waiting around. And Mm -hmm. I'm not a very uh, superstitious person. Putting that energy out there will find its way back to him somehow. You know what I'm saying? And then if he gives a shit, you will get a response. But like you sitting on the sideline by your phone, hoping he figures it out, uh, isn't going to do the trick. Exactly. Yeah. I feel the exact same way. In the meantime... Get back out there and, and date. I mean, you don't have to get date seriously. You don't have to, like, just at least tell yourself that you're just able to do it. And, yeah, you'll have some crappy dates, and some of your dates might just make you miss him just because you really enjoyed him. But don't do, don't be willing to be friends with him, you know? Yeah. No, I'm not that girl. <laughs> and he needs to realize that if he wants access to you, he has to commit to you he will make contact and and it'll be very open-ended and what he's going to do is hope that you are like hey what's up what are you up to and like and ask him to get together so that mm-hmm. way he didn't ask you and he didn't not respect your boundary you know what yeah, i'm saying totally, like, that's what yes, he's gonna do yeah totally because the whole time he was like balls in your court like and when we were leaving he he's like to you yeah no like next so- time you say, no, 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 sir. Balls in your court. <laughs> yeah. Cause right. like, he was like, oh, like, let's go, let's go to the movies this night. Like there's this cool thing going on. And I'm like, no, like, I'm not going to keep seeing you. Like, that's just going to get me hurt. And he's like, okay. And that's where we left it. Yeah. I would have loved for you to say to him, but no balls in your court. <laughs> I know. Fine. Okay. Next time I will. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, um, because yeah, you're just like, no, no. What do you mean? I'm not. Like there, the, in the longer answer to that thing he said, is I, I'm in no way confused that I have <laughs> zero interest in being your pal. I understand that you're not entirely sure about whether you want me to be your girlfriend, but I'm 100% not confused <laughs> about my interest yeah. in only being your pal, all while you still date and hook up with other people. Yeah, exactly, like, yeah. I'm, yeah. I could not be more clear about that. I'm not even sure if I want you to be my person forever. What I am, again, to repeat, totally. is sure that I'm interested in finding out all while, like, you know, not, like, going on the dating apps while I do it. Totally, Because we yeah. can always break up, and then <laughs> I'll go back on the dating apps then, you know? yeah. Yes, that's exactly what I feel. And like when we were talking about it, he was like, well, he's like, I'm not going on a bunch of dates. Like I'm not having sex with other people. He's like, I just don't want to shut down the option of eventually doing that. And I was like, well, I'm like, okay, just because you're not currently like, that's fine. But I just think like, to me, it's like, if he was willing to, um, like if he could see something in the future, I feel like he would be fine to be like, let's try it out. But if he's not, then that's fine. I just think it's time for me to move on. Yeah. No, you're doing right. You did it great. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. All right. Well, I'll take this care. has been helpful. All right. Yeah. See All right. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for listening, guys. Don't forget to send in your questions at asknickacastme.com. Cast with the K for our Ask Nick episodes or mediation calls. I think we are going to get hope, hopefully April. I think we're going to get April for a Tuesday episode. That We're trying to get April. We'll see if she's available. If not, I think we're, I'm pretty confident we're going to try to get someone else for Tuesday's episode and Colby and Madeline on Wednesday for going deeper. You won't want to miss that. See you tomorrow.
Hey guys, thanks for watching. Before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps and Wednesday Celebrity and Expert Interviews. See you next time.